colors. Today we are making cocoa bombs. I'm really excited about this one because these are just really fun. Um, one, to drop them into your warm water and watch them melt away, but also just to make and give it to someone special is just really nice and it's a nice touch to any baskets. So I did already kind of get some things prepped. So I have my mini marshmallows in a cup here. I have my favorite cocoa, and then I have crushed up candy canes. So we do have this mint twist that's in the store and it's already crushed, so I didn't have to worry about that. Um, if you have candy canes at home, just go ahead, take that wrapper off, put it into a Ziploc bag and take a hammer to crush it or a rolling pin. You'll just want the pieces small enough that they'll be able to fit um, inside your cocoa bomb and add that flavor. And then I also have two chocolates. Um, so I got a milk chocolate and a white chocolate. Um, I am going to do my molds today in that milk chocolate and we'll go ahead and drizzle with that white. Uh, another thing is make sure you have a microwavable safe bowl because you are going to need to heat up your chocolate in there. And then of course our mold. So first things I like to do is it is much easier to work with these molds when they are individual. So I go ahead and cut this up. All right, and one more. Now, if you don't want these to be squared and all this extra silicone to be in your way, just go ahead and go around all your molds and just snip it off. Um, I would leave a little bit because you need something to hold on to but kind of just rounding out those corners. And that should give you enough room to have something to hold on to. I personally like everything out of my way, but um, they will work like this as well. Just comes down to a preference. All right. Okay, now that all my molds are ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and get my chocolate ready. Now that my molds are all cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that microwave safe bowl over. And we're gonna go ahead and add the chocolate. And I'm probably gonna do about a half a bag. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. It does not have to be exact. And then I'm gonna heat this up in the microwave in 20 second intervals. Okay, you guys, my chocolate is nice and melted. Um, I want to make sure you guys are stirring in between those 20 second intervals. And then I'm not having it where it's so hot that it's just really runny. Otherwise, it's going to have a hard time to set on my mold. Um, I also like to come in and use a spoon because that backside of the spoon just makes it a little bit easier to spread throughout my mold. So I put the chocolate in there. I'm just kind of spreading it all the way around the best I can. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have all the red covered up on this because we wanna make sure the shell is pretty sturdy. So from here, it's kinda of hard to tell on camera, but there's some bubbles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda of push up the bottom of the mold and it's gonna pop all those bubbles and even it out. I also like to kind of take that little extra chocolate that pools and just kind of tilt it so it goes to the edge. And then I just kind of rotate it. Making sure I have a nice covering. I can always add a little bit more chocolate because we don't want to see any red. All right. Again, I'm just gonna pop those bubbles. And make sure my edges are nice and covered. You don't have to do it this way. I just, I personally like the way it kind of evens my mold out a tad more. All right, 
pop those bubbles. So I got a mold there already. And we're just gonna continue that. I'm gonna do all six this with the milk chocolate. So I just kind of start the pool in there and then spread it out. You can always take out chocolate if you need to. But you wanna make sure it has a good coat and a layer to it. And if you end up with your edges a little bit off, don't worry, we're gonna fix that before we seal the, all of our cocoa bombs up. So again, popping those bubbles. And then I like to do that little tilt just to kind of get my chocolate evenly spread in there. And then we'll pop those bubbles again because I can see some bubbles forming again. You don't have to pop the bubbles. It's just definitely going to make it a little bit um, more secure and it's going to have a smoother look to it, which is nice. All right, so that one's done. And we're just gonna continue down the line. So I can let these air dry, um, but I personally prefer to put them in the fridge to really make sure they do get that full cure they need. Um, again, that's just a preference because I'm not as patient to wait for it to air dry. Um, but if you have the time and patience, you can let these sit out and air dry easily. You just want to make sure they're completely hardened before you pop them out of the mold. So again, I just kind of tilt it and run it all the way around the edge. I just think it starts you out with a really clean um, bowl. Or I like to do this because, again, it just kind of makes sure that my, all my edges are even. And I know everything got covered at least a little bit. And I could always come in and add more. Also, see how I have that line in there? When you go to pop the bubbles, it really gets rid of any of those harsh lines that you have. All right. So I'm going to finish up the other two and I'm going to go ahead and let them harden. And then we will come back and fill our bombs up. Since my molds are almost hardened, I'm going to go ahead and get my white chocolates. I'm just going to probably put about a quarter in there of the bag maybe less and we're gonna microwave this and then in those 20 second intervals and then i'm gonna go ahead and put this in a ziploc baggie um, that i'm gonna use as a frosting bag all right so my white chocolate is all nice and melted and i got my ziploc bag because i don't have any frosting bags and i'm just gonna go ahead and spoon that right in there let's get this to the edge And then just pour it right on in your bag. All right, from, from here, we just go ahead and zip it up. And then I wanna make sure it's all going down to one corner and that my air is out of here. All right. So I have my little frosting bag ready um, and we're gonna go ahead and get those molds out.
All right, you guys, my molds are all hard, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out of here. And I'm just really gonna try to be as careful as I can be, kind of stretch the sides, and then I'm just gonna slowly Slowly work our finger down to the bottom and it'll pop right out. This is why it's important to make sure your chocolate is thick enough um, so that you're not breaking your chocolate mold as you're pulling it out of the silicone. And just pop. Again, my tops will get a little bit more even. Um, so if that breaks, I'm not too concerned with it. Oop, I got this guy a little too thin over here. See, and he just broke. So I might have to go ahead and make another mold. All right, I did actually break two of my molds. But we got enough here to make two bath or two cocoa bombs. So first things I'm gonna or ne next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and heat up a plate because we're gonna melt these edges and that's what's gonna adhere together. All right, so my plate is all microwaved. I did that for about a minute, and what I'm gonna do is flip this over and just kind of spin it to kind of level it out and also get it melted. And then I'm gonna come in with a scoop, a tablespoon of my um, cocoa, and then I sprinkle about a half a tablespoon. And then I wanna go ahead and scoop in some marshmallows. And then I'm gonna come in with that other half on that hot or that warm plate and just spin it on there so it gets nice and melty. And then set it right on top of the other one. So those will end up melting together and adhering. Um, I like to have a little something to set my cocoa bomb while it melts together. Uh, and I can also put my white icing on it. Another thing that would work if you don't have a small little cup would be a cupcake holder. And you can also just plop that cupcake holder right into a treat bag as well. So again, I'm gonna melt that. If you have any really bad edges that got broken, you can melt it all the way down. And then I like to go in with a tablespoon of cocoa, about a half a tablespoon, and then load it up with the marshmallows. You do not have to um, have the, you don't have to add the peppermint or marshmallows. It just kind of makes it a little bit more fun when you drop it into your warm water. All right, so again, just gonna make sure that's all even. And then we set it on top of the other one. And then those will end up melting together. Now, if you don't like to see the line in it, you can easily, I like to go ahead and put the icing on the top, but if you don't like to see the line, you could go ahead and put icing all the way around here and then maybe roll it in the um, peppermint or some sprinkles. That's just gonna come down to a preference. Now with that icing bag, I'm gonna go ahead and snip that corner. And then I just like to go back and forth with it. This can be a little messy, so make sure you have a table you don't mind cleaning up. And then I go ahead and let that dry, and then I put them right into a bag. All right, you guys, these are all dry now, so I'm just gonna take it off my little holders here and look how fun is this now all i need is some hot water or some warm milk and to go ahead and drop these in there and watch them melt away 
All right, you guys, thank you for joining me and happy crafting.